PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. In the past, we used to call it PCOD, that's polycystic ovarian disease. But today we call it a syndrome because it's not really a disease. It's a syndrome by which we mean you see different aspects of the same problem. In short, uh, you may see PCOS women who are obese. 80% of them are obese. 20% may be very lean. You will find PCOS women who have got irregular periods. You will have PCOS women who don't have irregular periods. You will have women who will have extra hair on their face. They would have loss of hair from the scalp. They would have a lot of acne. But there are many PCOS women who don't have these problems. So there are different types of or phenotypes of PCOS which we see which may be different depending on what are the problems they are having. So in short, if I have to define who has got PCOS, there are three criteria which we have to look into. And if any two of those three criteria are met, then we say this is PCOS. The first criterion is that a woman should have irregular periods. Irregular periods by which we mean that the period should be more than 35 days in a cycle. It may be a very anywhere, normal, normal periods may be anywhere between 25 to 35 days. But there are some women who would get their periods at 40 days, 45 days, 50 days, some after 3 months, some after 6 months. Anything beyond 35 to 40 days is considered as delayed periods or irregular periods. The second criterion to be met with is where a woman should have evidence of extra male hormone in her body. Either the evidence has to be a clinical evidence in the form of acne or hair growth in areas where normally men have hair, say on, under the chin, on the beard area, on the midline of the chest, around the nipples, on the lower part of the abdomen. These are areas where women normally don't have hair. And if a woman has dark pigmented hair in these areas, or if she has a lot of acne on her face, or if she has got loss of hair from her scalp. These are, the, these are the manifestations of extra male hormone in the body. It may be a woman has no such problems. She may just have little extra hair on the chin. But if you do her blood levels for male hormone and if you find they are raised, then that also is considered as evidence of increased male hormone in the body. The third criterion is that on ultrasound, a woman should show ovaries which are enlarged, which may be more than 10 ml in volume, or they should have more than about 10 to 12 small, small eggs seen in each ovary uh, on ultrasound. Now, these are the three criteria which have to be met with. If a woman has more than two of those criteria present, say if she has only irregular periods, and she has ultrasound showing polycystic ovaries, then two are being met out of three. Then we would say she has PCOS. But the common thing I find is that if a woman comes with an ultrasound report, which has those issues on ultrasound, the doctor there writes, patient has PCOS, which is not correct. PCOS is not presence of ovaries looking polycystic. What, when ovaries look polycystic on ultrasound, it's called PCOM, that is polycystic ovarian morphology. PCOS is when a patient may have that ultrasound picture plus has irregular periods or has evidence of increased male hormone. So if a patient has PCOS, you'll see different types. You may see a woman who has got polycystic ovaries on ultrasound with irregular periods. You'll see patients with uh, polycystic ovaries on ultrasound, irregular periods and evidence of male hormone. Or you may have a woman with evidence of male hormone being high with irregular periods and no polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. So just because you have polycystic ovaries on ultrasound does not label you as a patient of PCOS. So I think I'm quite clear in what PCOS is and it's so important for us to make that diagnosis at the right time that because it has implications for all, all your lives. Hence, it is important that when we label a patient as PCOS, we must be sure in our heads that this is PCOS before telling a woman that she has PCOS. Now, one more thing we have to be careful about is in an adolescent, a girl who's younger than 18, we never label her as a PCOS because so often on ultrasound, 
we may find that the ovaries are looking polycystic but by the time she reaches the age of 18 or plus the polycystic appearance disappears and hence we always keep that diagnosis in reserve till she reaches the age of 18. If the ovaries continue to remain polycystic and she has any one of those two other criteria present only then we would call her as a PCOS.